All right, welcome back. Let's do another project here today. Uh, let's do the seahorse sculpture. That's a fun one. Uh, we're going to use two inch and a quarter clear rods welded up to a smaller diameter handle to make it convenient to rotate. And uh, it's going to be about three inches, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and we'll need two of those. The uh, reason we need two is one is going to become the seahorse and the other is going to become the flared out uh, base that it sits on. So we'll start off with, uh, we've got the list of things here, we're going to uh, gold fume over the clear first and then we're going to wrap some cobalt around it. Then we're going to rake it with cobalt tubing. Yes, I said tubing. Uh, it's tubing that I started it off as one inch heavy wall and I pulled it down to about uh, 7 to 10 millimeter and it's very thin wall at that point after being pulled down. Uh, so if you're raking that on down the length of this piece or it'd be over here on this piece uh, you can lay down a real nice wide flat footprint of just the cobalt and it has a nice effect being somewhat translucent. Uh, so you can see into it and see the designs underneath and the other uh, metal colors. So after wrapping the cobalt, we're going to rake it with cobalt tubing, then we'll silver fume, and then rake in between our previous rakes with just clear. So we'll, we'll get a full spectrum of colors there uh, in what is to be the seahorse's body. So after we've uh, done our wrap and rake job on this here and given it the colors, We'll go ahead and, and uh, rough shape the seahorse's form here. It'll be somewhat like this. There will be a little snout area. It'll be the head, the neck, the upper body down to the lower body, and then the tail section out to about there. And it's all straight, perfectly round, in line, and symmetrical at this point. And then we'll punty off right up here to what's going to be the back of the head and heat up the neck and then twist it and put this bend in it here and start shaping our body. And I'm going to use a, a little texture masher, uh, one of the tools, to put a series of uh, parallel concentric lines down the body here. And we'll see those over in the section here. Uh, we'll add on eyes, uh, put on the fin back here, some little ridges, and uh, eventually we will shape the bottom and curl that up, moving our handle up to the top, and then using that to attach our seahorse to the base right here, and giving us our finished item, this guy here. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, we're going to start off with our gold fuming. And this is a little vial of placer gold. Uh, I got it here in uh, Grants Pass in the Rogue Valley uh, from Armadillo Mining Shop. Shout out to them uh, for having this on hand. This is locally sourced uh, uh, free-range organic gold. Yes, like that. Uh, little tiny specks of it. We're going to put it on the end of that little clear rod with a bit of cobalt on there. And you see one of them just popped off, but most of them will stick. Try not to use too fast of a flame and they'll, they'll stick on there a little bit better. And uh, They're really tiny, so putting five or six of those little tiny flakes equals one good size drop on the end of the rod there. And again, the, the reason for the cobalt there is because it doesn't move as much in the flame as the clear, which tends to want to ball up and fall down. Yeah, here we are just uh, applying it rather heavily uh, over the clear that was pulled down. Just putting on a good, good heavy layer. And then taking some more cobalt, and we're just going to wrap a stringer of that on there. Now, try and not overdo the length on these. If you get them too long and they start cooling down, you can have them all pop off like a broken spring. So put a little bit of heat to it, relax them onto the glass, and ensure that they stay in position. Now this, uh, what's in my right hand there, it looks like cobalt solid rod, but again that's uh, pulled out tubing, so it is hollow. And being hollow, it uh, collapses very quickly in the flame and lays down a nice wide pattern. You can see there how wide that is relative to the surface it's being applied to. So we're going to rake that three times. 
and that's going to leave us a little bit room between each cobalt rake to put on the clear. Oh, sorry about that. Four rakes. There is still room for one more there. Okay, then a little bit of silver. Put on a, a light fume of that. There we go. Now we'll come in between each of those cobalt and do the rake with clear. And then when we melt it all in, it's going to burn off a lot of that silver fume that is unprotected by the clear uh, so that we see right through. And that'll give us nice contrasting uh, color bands between the gold fume only and the gold and silver fume, which is encased. So one rake of clear down between each cobalt. And at the very end of each of those, I draw back just a little bit, pulling it upwards. And that'll remove the acute angle at the end, which is where a crack would begin to occur uh, if this were getting too cold while you were working it. So really just melted in that uh, the tip of it there, got it all smooth, and then put a punty on it to help hold the weight. And now we'll go back uh, to what will eventually be the tail area. And we'll just uh, really heat that up and smooth the material in. Now we're just going to heat up the body area, really just kind of melting that design all into one smooth surface and a little bit of marvering to clean up the, uh, the exterior. All right, a little bit of marvering, and now it's nice and uh, smooth, and it tapers cleanly. Just looking at the patterns there, you can see the wraps, the rakes, the bands, the striations that it forms. Okay, so the next step will be to uh, separate the area of the body from the head and the tail. Uh, we're going to keep it all long and straight and symmetrical at this point, but we will be uh, putting in those different areas. Oh, looks like I got ahead of myself a little bit there. I forgot about this step. I'm going to flatten it a little bit in the belly area with this uh, texture tool and give it those little concentric but parallel lines on both sides. So that's, that's mid-body essentially. So now we have uh, the flattened sides. So we're no longer symmetrical, and we can look at it and say, okay, you know, that's, that's the mid body, that's the left side, that's the right side. And then we'll draw out the material that uh, will be the tail here. And then we'll use that as a handle while we work the other end and create the head and do the detail work there. So we've already decided that, uh, you know, those are the sides, so that's going to be the belly uh, sticking out there. And then here will be our neck. Just kind of marvel a little ring down there. Now you may notice I've got a little seahorse on my uh, work table there. That's a permanent fixture on that. 
but it uh, does help to have a, a reference piece around, even if it's just a picture on your smartphone or something. But, you know, have something that you can refer to, to look at and then look back at your own work and say, am I doing it right? Is everything going the correct direction? And this will be the, the area that will be the snout. And then we'll just cut that off right in the flame. Let it ball up a little bit on the end. And then we'll take a little dental tool and kind of push it in and create those little kind of puckered lips that they have. So that's what we've got at this point. Very primitive shape, but we're getting there. So I'm just going to take my tweezers and kind of heat up the front and rear edges of the body and pull up some little spiky protuberances. They don't need to be extreme, just, just little things kind of sticking up and giving them that spiny look. Now, it's getting so much heat uh, that the whole thing is starting to bend. and That's okay. We'll just continue on, and then as we uh, finish this section, we'll uh, warm the whole thing up and straighten it out. Just like that. Just a few more. Now where it bulges forward, that's going to be the front where the, the belly kind of sticks out. So we've created uh, one row of little spines uh, in the front of the belly and two little rows on the back. we go we will bend the neck a little bit there we go and just position the head at the uh, the angle that we'd like Make sure that it's uh, firmed up before we knock the punny off. We don't want it to, to bend afterwards. And then here's adding on uh, a couple of eyeballs. This is just a little bit of the cobalt over white, uh, which is going to give me an area to create like an eye socket. So I just put a little dollop of that on each side. And then using the back end of the tool, just pressing a little, uh, little dimple into each side and that'll be where the milli-eye is inserted. So we'll just drop that on there. And there's one on the other end of this rod, so we've got our pair of eyes. There's the second one. I'll draw off any excess material. Just kind of go back and forth with your rod, drawing uh, the clear off of the eye until you have just the amount you want to, to make the cornea and kind of magnify your milli.
a few more little spikes on the back of the head there. Trying to pull them up and make them noticeable, but not, not make this thing too fragile. I love the sea dragons, but I've never made one because I just, I, I know it's going to get broken very quickly. They're so large and fragile looking. There we go. There's a little scallop uh, leather stamp. So we'll go in behind the eye on each side and give it a little stamp. And that's going to give it a, an elegant little textured thing that looks a lot like the little fins that they have up there. There we go. Do it to the other side and then we'll continue on. This is, uh, again, the cobalt over white, and I'm going to put some of that on the back where I'm going to have that little dorsal fin sticking up. There we go. We just kind of wiped it on. No real skill necessary on that. And then we'll take the uh, texturing tool again and give them a little fin-like appearance just by crimping them down there. And then we'll draw it up a little bit at the very top and down a little bit at the bottom, giving it a, a little bit more organic look to it. Draw that off and move on to the next spot. A few more little uh, uh, putting a, a punny on the top of the head so that we can go down and work the tail area. I'm just making sure that that's set up there and not going to pop off when I go to put all the weight on it. All right, so now we'll warm up that tail area and cut off the, uh, the other punty. I'll put that one away and get a fresh one to use to uh, put the curve in the tail. So I'm just going to heat up the end of it so that it'll be sure to, to tack to the other glass if they're both warm. But it's not a, not a permanent weld, just a, just a light tack to it while it's really hot. Oh, I guess I'm going to go with the uh, octagonal reamer instead. Uh, a lot of times I'll just take the clear rod and uh, grab it, heat the tail, and then use it to curve it in one motion. But uh, you can also do it this way, just taking a little tool, heating up an area, and slowly curving it up. There we go. There's our curvature to our tail. And I think this guy is ready to mount on the base. All right, so this is that uh, inch and a quarter clear rod, and for those of you who are paying attention, you probably noticed that I, I went with a slightly smaller uh, rod for the seahorse body. Uh, I got out there after I did the whiteboard and got to looking at it and like, hmm, yeah, I think a little bit smaller, so I, I did change that. Uh, in the whiteboard, I called for two of those inch and a quarter. In reality, one of them was uh, uh, about one inch, and it was slightly uh, amber cast instead of clear. So here's that base. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it since we've uh, made them in other videos before. This is just a, a variation of. For the uh, little seafloor uh, base, I like to use just some kind of little random geometric shapes. The, the star is a good one to represent the sea star. The little scallop leather stamp is good for some of the shells and things you see down there. And uh, uh, the little diamond textured tool, just to kind of go around the edge, gives it almost a, a granular, uh, sandy bottom look. And then when it's fumed, uh, it'll stand out a little bit, and you'll have a base that seems to thematically match uh, your uh, seahorse. So, uh, like this base looks pretty good with the seahorse or the octopus or even a sea turtle. And if I was doing a frog or a gecko or something like that, I would be more inclined to use flowers and vines and leaves uh, in the stamping of the base. 
So we've necked it down a little bit to prepare it for easier removal uh, after we've stamped and fumed it. Uh, be a little bit easier to cut off from the rest of the clear rod. So going to the bottom, just putting a generous amount of heat, getting it really warm, and then we'll pick one little spot and say, okay, that's where I'm going to stamp, and put the stamp to it. So that was the, the big star in the center, and then we'll uh, stamp in some other little designs. go from the big scallop to the small scallop. And then this is just a, a bent quarter by 20 uh, all thread rod. And uh, with that bend, it makes it a little bit easier to apply that little curving uh, repetitive parallel lines. So that you know looks kind of like a sea cucumber or, or you know, something like that. There are all kinds of objects sitting around your shop that are great for texturing in little designs. There we go. Just kind of filling in the little empty spots and then we'll go around the edge with uh, another texturing tool and that's the diamond texture. The uh, tool area on that was just like an old uh, X-Acto knife handle or a small uh, mini screwdriver handle with uh, the knurling on it. But it does make a, a good texturing tool. Puts in a bunch of little diamond patterns in the, in the base there. And they're not real visible yet, but after it's been fumed, they'll be very visible. All right, you can kind of see our designs in there. It'll be much more apparent after fuming. So a little bit of gold. And even though we're trying to fume just the bottom, some of the gold fuming is going to wrap around and get on the upper surface of that base. And we'll deal with that in a minute. So we've got our fume there. That's going to give it some, uh, some more depth and some uh, visibility when seen from the top. And here, this is where I'm burning off the, the gold fume that kind of wrapped around and got on this side of that. So just a real high heat, lots of oxygen, and a, a slow spin through the flame, and it'll burn off all that vapor deposition, the, the gold fume. All right. So got the fuming off the top. Now, when stamping the bottom, sometimes you'll create little ridges that stick up and actually go below, and it would not sit flat. So we're going to heat the whole thing up again, not to melt everything in, but just get it soft enough that you can marver it down and, and produce that uh, concave section in the base uh, and then flatten the bottom to make sure that it's going to sit smoothly on a table surface. So that's uh, marvering it down a little bit. You can see it's uh, got more of an angle now. And then we'll reheat that softly and then press it flat, making sure that uh, this thing will not wobble. And we're good to go. So we'll claw up to that, and you can see now how useful that constriction is, because if this was full-on inch and a quarter going into that base, uh, it'd be very hard to heat it up and remove it without either melting your claws or deforming the, uh, the glass that you work so hard to, to shape and fume. So tight little ring of flame there, and we'll separate that. A little bit of marvering to get that hot material out of the way and get to the cooler material under it. And a gentle pull at this point will separate those two pieces.
All right, our base is separated and ready to hold our uh, seahorse. And you can see much better now the, the little patterns in there and how they're magnified and visible from the top. So we'll really heat up that base, get that area that we're going to hook it to molten, and we'll be using some of that blow-by heat to make sure that the seahorse is adequately warmed and able to weld up to the base without us distorting the tail. And that's the key, is just balancing how much heat you get into those parts. There we go. Just kind of pulling and gently rotating slowly and checking the angles from all different angles. Huh? Looking pretty good. So give it plenty of time to uh, make sure that it's set up. You don't want to pull it off too soon and have the thing bend on you. And then a little polish where the punty was. And we are done. We now have our little... Uh, seahorse sculpture on a base. He's a real cute little guy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed, and uh, if any of you try it, uh, uh, you know, get back with me and let me know how you did with it. Maybe send me a photo. Uh, please uh, comment if you have any comments or questions, and uh, like and subscribe. All right, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time.